the decision to step aside from blaming and condemning is a major turning point in your Christian life. And it's a major turning point in the life of our church family. We need to be willing to offer caring correction. We also need to be willing to receive the correction that's offered to us. And if, as we like to say, we are really different as followers of Christ, then this is an aspect of life where it will be obvious. We'll be willing to help each other. We'll be willing to have the tough conversation. We'll be willing to receive the tough conversation. Now, I know it's, it's, it's often helpful to have a little bit of a, a know-how-to example, uh, to tell a story to kind of help get our, our minds and our hearts around something. So I want to tell you a story about Fred Rathwell. Fred Rathwell was one of the elders in the church where I grew up. And Fred was a, was a giant of a man. He was a, he was a tall guy. And he had broad shoulders. And he had massive hands and a, and a big head. And he had a booming voice. And he was kind of a blue-collar kind of guy. But he was the elder at our church that kind of looked after the building and the facilities. And he was maybe in his late 50s, early 60s, when I was about 8 or 9, maybe 10 years old. And as little guys, we used to have a lot of fun at church after the services, running around and playing games and getting into trouble and make a lot of noise. And there were always, you know, the odd uh, disapproving look or the odd little, you know, finger wag that came our way as a, as a group of boys. But we would often go down into the basement of the church. It was kind of just like an open hall with a tile floor and, and some divided rooms along the sides. And we used to go downstairs and we would go into the nursery and we would grab one of those, like, nursery squishy toys or, you know, those toys that would squeak when you... <laughs> and we used to kick those things around and play games with them. And we were playing football with one of these little nursery toys after church one day. And, uh, and I was the one who was playing the quarterback. And I went back to, for a, a go-long kind of pass, and I just hucked that thing. And it went all the way across the room and smashed into the exit sign right at the back and sent it, you know, into millions of pieces at the other end of the room. And just as I did that, one of these dear little old ladies came out of the washroom on the other side and saw all this happen. And your face kind of wisened up. We've told you little boys, and I'm going to tell Fred. <laughs> and Fred comes into the room, and Fred just kind of stands and looks, well, what's happened here? And there's silence. And he kind of comes over to right in front of me. And he puts his massive hands right on my shoulders. He could have popped my head right off if he wanted to, I think. <laughs> I am sure I had a look of sheer terror on my face. And in his big, booming, but gentle voice, he said, Son, don't you worry about that exit sign. You and I are going to fix that. It's not going to cost you a cent. And I learned something that day about condemnation or the lack thereof. And I won't ever forget that because of the gentle way that he loved me but corrected me. We need to eliminate condemnation and then help. But before we move on to talking a little bit about pearls and prayers, we need to add a little bit of an addendum here to planks. When Jesus says, you know, we should not judge others, he's not at all saying that we should stop making value assessments, right, or to shy away from evaluating what and who is around us. We absolutely need to keep distinguishing between what is good and what is not good. Jesus is not suggesting that we should stop discerning how things are because we, we want to avoid condemning others. We can, however, train ourselves to discuss our failures together and to begin processes of, of correction and restoration without attacking 
the worth of each other, our worth as human beings. But it would also go a really long way if we could extend grace and the benefit of the doubt to each other. You know, recognizing that none of us do this sort of thing perfectly. <laughs> We're human. And as we endeavor to call each other to the form of Christ, and as we endeavor to initiate change on what appears to be out of line, we, we do those things imperfectly. And as we recognize others bringing that conversation to us, we also hear that conversation imperfectly. And we may not be able to know how to take and receive it as anything other than an attack on us. We're just imperfect people trying to love each other as best we can. And my friends, we, we need the church to play this role in our lives. We need to play this role for each other. And we all need to rely on the grace and the spirit of God to help us on both ends of the deal. You know, he will help us to learn to correct and to challenge each other without condemning. And he will help us to receive correction without feeling condemned. 